Hi. If you're dealing with software, whether it's building software, maintaining it, shipping it, chances are that you have heard of the word container a lot by now. You're probably using containers, thinking about using containers, or are already a pro at dealing with containers and packaging using containers. There are also chances you have seen a diagram that shows something like this, where there's a cute little rectangular box that shows application and libraries layered together into a container. Now, development teams love containers because, you know, this neat little packaging what is what makes it portable. You can run a container on, you know, a cloud or an infrastructure on-prem without pretty much changing nothing about it. And the size of a container is really small, so it you know, makes sense from a resource consumption model. And that is what the unique ability of a container is. At the same time, containers are layered uh, in the very nature of how they're constructed. So it makes it super easy for somebody to take a container from one end, layer on their own application code on top of that, and then send it away uh, or ship it as a brand new container. And this is what makes things much more easier and fun for development teams. But when dev teams work with maybe tens and thousands or even hundreds of containers, how fun is it to really walk through each container and start building that? Do they really save time? Is there an overhead that they have to spend constructing these containers? That is what we are going to find out. My name is Boski Savla, and I'm a technical marketing manager at VMware. Now typically, this is what, you know, this is an oversimplified container diagram. In reality, a container diagram might have multiple layers. Most likely, it will at least have another base layer, which probably has, you know, something like an Ubuntu OS, base OS, or certain um, runtime capabilities that are required to compile software that is, you know, packaged up in, within that container. And so um, the containers that development teams use today will start off with an existing container and then they'll package it up with their own software, you know, run it through, and that is when you get a final container like that. Now, what that process is, what is involved in really taking a container that's existing and packaging, packaging it up with your own application, let's try to find that out. Let's take it back a step. Now, to begin with, most application teams, you know, when they are trying to uh, build a container, the objective is really to solve a business problem that they have coded up or they have created an application around and that is going to run in a container. And so it starts off write, writing some kind of a code. And there are a lot of decisions that go into building this application code, right? What kind of language am I going to use? Is this a Java? Is this a Ruby app? Um, you know, et cetera. So, you have to kind of figure out um, what is my application code, what uh, what goes in, how my architecture is, and so on and so on, so on and so forth. And then you probably have to, um, you know, actually write the code. And that might be a huge deal in itself. Once, however, you have something working, dev teams would like to package it up in a container. And to do so, most likely they are going to start writing a file called as a Docker file. Now this Docker file is essentially a text file that has instructions on how to package up your application code such that it can then run on a container on time. And as such, this Docker file needs to have a set of instructions um, that, you know, that it can take and then start building a, a, a container image. To start off with, you know, the first decision that probably a dev team needs to make is what is it that my base image would be like. For example, if I have a Ruby or if I have a Node.js application, I want something where I can do an NPM build. So I'll probably, you know, go with the base OS like Node, um, you know, whatever version they like. So you, you start off with that. Once you have that decision made, the next thing to figure out is, you know, what are the libraries that will be needed and how do I start installing them? And you have to actually give these instructions into the Docker file. Once you have those libraries built, 
you then have to actually compile or build the application itself. Now, because containers are going to be bite size, you also want to remove any unnecessary files that are within, um, that were created as part of either the build or the compile process. So you then have to then remove unnecessary files within that container image. Now these files could be spread across multiple directories. They could be, you know, anywhere within that container. So you have to figure that out. Once you have done that and you have a set of Docker file commands within that file, the next step, of course, is to build. So you'll do something like a Docker build um, to actually create a container image. And once you have done that, the next step is to put it in a registry. Now the registry could be anything. It, it's a way of holding your container images. Now once you have things in the registry, then it becomes really simply, simply easy to start deploying these containers. Now just think about it, the entire process of uh, enabling or writing application code, packaging it up into a container, and then finally deploying it. Now this process may seem simple for maybe one, two, or three containers if you have to build them. But if you're building you know, tens or hundreds of containers, then there's a significant overhead when it comes to you know, manually writing a Docker file, building it, and then deploying it. There's also a testing cycle involved because you want to test out whether that Docker file that you created is working or not. So this can be a huge overhead and that is what we are going to, you know, solve for today. So imagine if, you know, a dev team didn't have to do all these three steps, step number two, three, and four. If there was a way to automate a lot of this, right? We wanted to automate this entire process. And that is what Cloud Native Build Packs helps us do. Cloud Native Build Packs are, um, it's a, open source project within Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and it is a set of standards defining how these different steps that are required to build a compliant container image can be automated. And using those you know, standards, there are projects that have been built around um, you know, enabling that using a CLI or an API. And the most common way of doing that is through the CN um, Cloud Native Build Packs pack project. Pack is a CLI command that can run in the same desktop or laptop or whatever environment the developers are using to actually go through creating a Docker file. Now, what will Pack do for us? So what will Pack do is it will go run into your application code. It will detect what kind of application code I have. So for example, if it sees a pom.xml file that it understands that this is probably a Java or a Spring Boot app that needs a Spring or a Java framework. If it sees a gem file that it knows that this probably is a Ruby app, so it needs to have a, a Ruby build pack that can detect and package it up. And Cloud Native build packs have multiple different build packs based on different languages. And these build packs essentially understand how to create um, or how to package up these applications into containers that are layered um, uh, to make life simpler for development teams. So the first thing that you know they will do is if you uh, run them within that same directory where your um, application code is, they will scroll through those directories and they'll understand what language build packs need to be enabled. Then they'll create an plan, so they'll analyze and plan what to build and how to build. Now, there might be a possibility that your application can have more than one languages or might need multiple stages in a Docker file build process. So this plan is going to analyze and figure out which build pack should be executed first. Once the plan has been created, then comes the actual build stage where the Cloud Native build packs will to package up your code into multiple different layers. These are different lifecycle stages that they go through. 
So build process is essentially going to figure out the plan and then build layers of different um, you know, container images. For example, there'll be a base layer where, you know, depending upon the application type, a base layer will be decided upon. There would be a lib libraries layer, there would be a runtime layer, there would be the application layer, so on and so forth. And what the build process will also do is it will compile the app and it will build the app into a completely different image. And whatever is not needed during the compiling stage will be discarded off, and whatever is needed for the final application to run will be packaged up, and that is what will be then exported into an OCI-compliant image. And this is where things are really interesting because it is not only optimizing or automating the entire process of building Docker files, but it is also optimizing what the Docker image is going to be from a security perspective, from a footprint perspective, etc. Once you have, um, you know, the image created, it will you can start running it on your local environments, or you can start deploying them. And this is something you know that the final. Um, application might look like you may you may have a base layer um, which could be version one you may have a libraries layer you may have a runtime layer you then finally have the app layer and you can have multiple such containers where you can you know start to run um, your or start to uh, use the pack CLI to automate this uh, this entire process. Now, because this is CLI based, or, or e you even have multiple different projects that enable or integrate um, the cloud native build packs with CI systems, you can actually automate a lot of this build process yourself. Now, this is great where you have automated everything that a container needs into um, into a system. But what happens? when something within, let's say, one of the image layers or one of the base layers, um, uh, we find out that there is a vulnerability or there's a CVE that was found out and we now have to update that particular container. Now in the traditional process, what might happen is you have to go back over here at step two, create a new Docker file, you know, give it a new base image, and then go through the entire build process again and do that. But in our case, with Cloud Native Build Packs, all the development team has to do is really go to the CLI and say, pack rebase. And what that is going to do is, because the Cloud Native Build Pack has already built that image for you, it can see through the different layers that exist within that container. And it can you know, replace a single layer with, an, uh, with a new layer. So you don't have to go through this entire process of redefining what that is. You just say pack rebase your image name. And what will happen is it will discard this base om o image from that existing container layer and rebase it with the new version, whatever the latest version of that patched uh, layer might be, and it will completely remove this keeping all these layers intact and as they were because they don't need any changes. And this is pretty fast. So, you know, if you have to apply patches to your container images, this is a much more efficient and a much more uh, secure way of doing so. Now, to summarize, I think cloud native build packs are a great way to go, uh, go about automating your container or your Docker files instead of just, you know, handwriting them, going through an error process, you know, testing them all over again and doing that for X number of times. At the same time, the cloud native build packs saves you time when you have to re-image or create a new image because there's an existing vulnerability that you found in a container. So thank you for watching this video.